Now, who made that decision to put all of those seals into one old helicopter? I keep asking one question. Now, I've read blogs on the Internet on this, and some former special ops guys are saying that they were sent to their death on purpose by someone in the Obama administration. I don't know whether, whether to believe it. I don't know what to believe anymore. All I know is they're dead. Dead is dead. Why would they do that? Well, let's see what the conspiracists are saying. Remember what happened prior to this. Osama bin Laden was killed by Navy SEALs, remember? Remember they went and got him, but they had three fast, the latest model attack helicopters, remember? They went and snatched him out of a, uh, uh, shot him up in his house. Three fast helicopters. In fact, one was shot down or, or, or fell down on its own. Now, a few months later, what did somebody in the Obama administration do a deal with the enemy? Saying, look, we're sorry we killed Osama bin Laden. We're going to sacrifice some SEALs to show you how sorry we are. I don't know whether to believe a thing like this. But when you got a guy in the White House who in the middle of what we're facing is having a blues party, turning it into a disgusting frat house as far as I'm concerned, and I don't care what you say about me. They have trashed the White House. He should be celebrating the uh, SEALs. He should be welcoming the parents of the dead seals, not the, the blue singers. Savage. Robert in Pittsburgh, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. I crewed uh, U.S. Army CH-47s for five years, and uh, all my buddies that I served with, we both, you know, email each other and all stuff, and so much protocol was subverted on that night that it could be nothing other than a setup. Okay, this is what I want to hear, Robert. Let's start from the top. CH-47 Chinook, how old, what, what, does that go back to the Vietnam era? They were first fielded by Boeing in 1958 as the Alpha model, and were used extensively through the Vietnam era, clean till today. Okay, why was that helicopter used instead of the most advanced attack helicopters on that night mission? Because it was a setup. It was a setup from the get-go that used the same flight path as the former chalk that went through that valley that night. Them, them RPG gunners were waiting. They knew that bird was coming to that same exact path. And steels are never used, hardly ever, on QRF missions like that. It's usually elements from the 10th Mountain or ra other rangers that are sitting at close a moment's notice. Steels are worth the weight in gold. They're used for high-value target capture, other missions like this. Now, in addition to the seals being put on a mission for which they're not uh, usually used, uh, rangers were killed as well, and, and some Afghani uh, um, equivalents. Why do you think they were put on that helicopter? Are you of the conspiracy theory group that thinks they were sacrificed in order to placate the, uh, the Taliban because uh, Obama had killed Osama bin Laden? Either that or somebody lied to them and put bait out there. I was in, they said there was a juicy target out there that the SEALs really wanted to get. You could never get, they are followed by a golden rule, and that's one team, one spot, one time. You never put more than one team of SEALs on one bird, and, and secondly, we always use a diversion landing zone. So mm. there's always a second. Wait, let me back this up for the non-military amongst us, including myself. How many SEALs died in that helicopter crash that Obama ordered? 22? Yes. Okay. And you say that normally they're smaller units put into into a, um, several different helicopters. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, they operate in six-man teams usually. Six-man teams. Somebody put 22 of them in one helicopter? One Vietnam-era helicopter in the middle of the night? I've been asking about this for a year now. All my friends that I served with, we definitely, we all listen to your show. We think it's great. We all believe that you hit the nail on the head when you said this was a setup. Because it doesn't make sense militarily, tactically, strategically. It was a setup from the get-go. But no. when you say setup, let's carry this conspiracy to its to its uh, logical conclusion. What do you mean setup? By who? By a subvertive enemy within our highest-ranking military branches. There's somebody that's an al-Qaeda sympathizer or just a jihadi themselves that set this up. Look what happened to the CIA agents in Pakistan who were blown up by a Jordanese uh, spy. You know, how'd that happen? Our best and brightest let this guy walk right... right wait, how about the blue singer in the White House sending the most advanced drone into Iran and it lands without a scratch and the Air Force says we don't know why or how? Is that possible that we have, again, the same operative doing this? Possibly. 
It could be a, it could be a whole ring of people. We don't know to that extent until there's a congressional hearing. And there probably never will be because it's so... Well, tonight we have a debate with the great Republican Party. You would think one of the, the geniuses who are so conservative, Ron Paul, perhaps, or the great Newt Gingrich, would raise this issue uh, and override the, uh, the liberal moderator and say, excuse me, I'm not answering that question. I want to talk about why so many Navy SEALs were killed in that mission. I'd like to see one of the candidates say that ever. Why, why are they not saying it? Why are the Republicans silent, sir? They don't have a spine. That's my only say. They'd rather see their country swept away than stand up for what's right and what this country was founded on. And that's one of the reasons I got out of the military, sir, is because I, I couldn't stand to serve under a communist, Stalinist leader like President Obama. No, you can't say that about him. He had a very nice uh, uh, party last night in the White House for blues singers. Yeah, maybe they'll have some illegal immigrants over, too. And they... yeah, He ought to celebrate uh, um, south of the border culture again. Perhaps, and uh, maybe he can have the Department of Homeland Security there and celebrating with them. You know, that's the way it's done. My friend, it's very serious business that we're involved in. And uh, we discuss these things, as you well know, at some peril. When we fear our own government and when we have conspiracies that we fear are occurring by our own government, what do we the people do? What do we the people do? I had these parents on who gave this, the ultimate sacrifice to this country. They lost their son. This is no longer rhetoric. And there, there must be a congressional investigation. There must be. I'm hoping that as a result of this broadcast tonight, uh, one of the congressmen, at least one on the Armed Services Committee, will hold a hearing. There are some who listen to this show. And it's worthy of a hearing, especially in an election year. Don't you think so? Yes, I believe so. Like I would say this is a bigger scandal than Fast and Furious and the death of uh, Border Agent Terry. And I don't care what the vermin in the media do or don't do. I can guarantee you that with the talk radio and the Internet, that hearing would get every every American listening to it. I can guarantee you if we get one congressman to pick up this story and run with it, we'll get to the bottom of this. Thank you for your service to this country. And this is the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Savage. 